What's up everybody, Joseph for you today with part 11 of Super Mario Galaxy 1, not 2. I feel like I'd say that like every part where I'm like, I almost say part 2, but it's not part 2. I don't know. Anyhow, we are here with Bowser's Dark Matter pl Plant or Factory, whatever it was called. Generator. I wasn't looking up at the screen. I should have been. This is one of, um... It's actually one of my favorite levels in the game, at least like castle levels. I've always liked the gravity mechanics in this game with the arrows. And I do like how it's like here, like okay, if I would have kept standing on like that bottom left area of the L block I'm on, I would have fell straight down to the floor and into the black hole. So you have to kind of move to where you won't fall one way, but once you go to the next section, you won't fall the other way either, so you gotta be careful with that. I also kind of like these little like black metal squares when I was I was no this still kind of confused me now but like these little squares see I understand what they are it's like you fall through them and you land a dark matter but when I was like younger they could they didn't make sense to me because these look like they look like a blue sky at least the ones we just went past not the one that's here this one's all like purpley but and these look like a blue like sky so to me I was like well is that like a place to another area so I remember like hopping into it like like a pipe and then dying I'm like what and then Mario does like the whole he Mario dies fairly pretty gruesomely in the dark matter as it's all he's like cripples up it's very disturbing especially for a Mario game anyhow basically what I do is like the level I think it's a great platform and challenge and it gets you thinking a little bit but I want to say yeah I would say this is probably my favorite of all the Bowser levels more definitely more than the fourth level again going while I was talking about the gravity I was paying attention and there you go you fall into dark matter this like gruesome death <laughs> I had to show that off though just because I wanted to show off how this is such a very unique death that now my favorite part of the level is right here though where you have to constantly keep moving so you are in line with the stuff the gravity mechanics all the gravity switching and all that so you don't die and you can't jump too high or far either because then you can also go into other way like gravity areas so right there it kind of does so you don't jump too high which I think is kind of cool but yeah I would say it's my favorite I would say I favor this a bit more over um Bowser's like galaxy reactor whatever the last level is called I would say one thing I will give galaxy 2 over this game is I think all the boss levels are a lot better by like a whole lot I think they're all a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of better it's a whole lot better. I love them all a lot more than these. I do love these too, but I feel like I have more nostalgia for these than anything. Now, I like the boss fights. Uh, like, the final boss in this game, which we'll get into a couple parts from now, I think that's like the best thing, like one of the best Mario bosses we've had, along with like New Super Mario Bros. Wii and 3D Wall. But I really, I don't know, like, that's the thing. It's like, I feel like you mesh. Galaxy 1 and 2 together, you get the best parts of both of them, you put them together, I feel like it would make like nearly the perfect game. Like I always feel like Mario Galaxy is one of the best Mario games. Like fun fact, I like this better than Odyssey, I know a lot of people say Odyssey is their favorite. I personally like Galaxy the best, that's just me. Well, I like the main like single player Mario games. I would say, that's my actual favorite favorite Mario game would most likely be, I would say 3D World. Or if they ever made um, a second 3D world, I would say it would be that one, most likely. Less it was just really bad. But, I don't know. I just, I like the multiplayer aspect. I like playing with players. That's why I do like playing like Super Mario Maker Online and all that. I love this co-op. I like being able to play with my friends and not having it as a like, switch of control or every time. Or with this game, you know, you have the, there is, it is two player or like, it's as co-op, but it's just like one course is a little, what is, a little like star course sort. Of. Which is one thing I do like that they fix in Galaxy 2 is a co-op mode, and that is a lot more um, interactive because you're the loom, you're like you're the Luma. I mean, they actually use that Luma a lot in the advertiser for Galaxy 2. I don't know if anyone watching this remembers the advertising. I don't. Thinking back, I don't really remember them advertising Galaxy 2 a lot, but I do just remember, I'm like, on TV and all that, I don't remember a lot of it. But I remember seeing it in a lot of, like, magazines and promotional material, like, posters and all that, like, GameStop or whatever. Also, 
Like, one thing that confuses me, how come right here, Bowser is, he's staying on one of the blue circles, which, you know, we're using to hurt him. How is he not getting hit by crashing through when he's jumping on top of, like, when he does this big jump? I guess, I don't know, because that jump's actually kind of like Mario's, um, spin jump, was kind of like a, a homing attack in a way. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of quests in this boss fight, but I still like it. I like this boss fight a lot better than, like I said, Galaxy 2's standard boss fight, and Galaxy 2's final. I think Galaxy 2's final fight would be a lot better if there was like a second, if the la the second phase was actually the third phase and they had some kind of second phase in there. So I like about this game's final battle so much is it has all the different parts and the music gets more and more instruments into it. It gets more and more like intense until you get to the final one, the final like area and then the music completely changes. So this completely throws off your expectations. It's like, oh my gosh, like this is it's like and it's just the ending is very impactful i can't wait to the ending of this game is one of my favorite parts of the game this is the general story which i can't wait to show that off i'm really excited for that anyways we're now getting the part of the game where we're starting you know we're starting to get to the later half and as we can see here this level looks very very similar to a level we've gone to before actually in the last part this is Gold Leaf Galaxy, and yes, it's very similar to beat um, Honey Hive Galaxy. Now, this is something Mario Galaxy is a slightly, just a little bit notorious on. A lot of levels get copy and pasted, especially between Galaxy 1 and 2, which is a little, another reason people think that they just made that in a completely new game instead of just adding as DLC, like it was originally planned. But, yeah, just... I like this level, I kinda, I don't know, I do like it, it's a level I haven't played much, cause like I've said before, back when I was like, I was younger and I first got this game, I never played the game a lot, and if I did I played a lot of the oil, oily or stages, a lot of, I didn't really play a lot of the later stages like this, and it was a stage, it was a stage I even was like kinda not into, I just wanna play it, so like this one the stage I was like, oh I only played Beehive, I don't need to play Gold Leaf. But, I actually do like this stage. I like a lot of the missions. The only problem I have with it is like... I don't know. The only problem I have is this, it's a repeat. And that's just kind of naturally annoying. But it does... The game has to do this a lot. This is the only time I can think of the time I had my... The Mario Galaxy does this. Like a big thing Mario Galaxy likes to do a lot is reuse concepts. Like, we'll see a lot of the same... General beats in a stage. Which is something Mario games kind of picked up for a while then Odyssey did come out Odyssey they kind of start to subvert expectations which is why I still love Mario Odyssey but that's one thing I guess going back to what I was talking about earlier with Mario Odyssey and liking this game better than Odyssey with Odyssey I feel like the first time I played through it was amazing I love the first time I played through Odyssey I didn't look up I saw a good majority of the trailers leading up to the game, like the E3 trailer, the reveal trailer. Of course, we saw the small snippets of the game. We saw of the lead up to the game with um back when it, we, the Switch was called the NX. But um for me, it was always like um Odyssey is such a great game to walk go through without watching YouTube playthroughs or anything. But like at this point, most people, if you even remotely interested in Mario Odyssey. You probably watch a playthrough and know some of the shocks. I feel like that takes out a lot of um, Odyssey's like flair. Not like, okay, I'm gonna spoil a bit of Odyssey here. The game is a couple years old now, so I'm not too, don't feel too bad about it. But like um, the Fallen Kingdom, I won't even say what happens in the Fallen Kingdom. But again, I'm try to avoid spoilers. Um, if this was an Odyssey playthrough, I probably would be talking about it more obviously. But like, what happens in the Fallen Kingdom? I think that was amazing. Or what happens to you at the end of the game? It's just there's a lot of stuff that happens in that game that you don't expect, and I love it. Oh, um, I forgot, but it's that island kingdom, that one island kingdom of all the purple goop. That was a great one too, for um everything that happens at the beginning of it, and then the after the second part kind of end. But we play in Odyssey, which I recently have done. I've replayed Odyssey. I would say. I've replayed it once since my initial playthrough, and then after that I started a third playthrough, and I think I stopped around Sand Kingdom. 
was it Sand? No, it was when it splits off to. There's a couple times something I do like about Odyssey where it makes it so like, oh, do we want to go to the Wood Kingdom or Seaside Kingdom? I believe it's called. And you get to pick which kingdom. And you pick one, and there you go. You know, like, oh, cool. And eventually you do all the kingdoms, but it's a cool little thing I like. Um, one thing I will say about what, what we're actually doing right now, there's little, like, question mark things. We don't see those ever again in this game. Now, uh, for, I'm, like, sort of that. Seeing those, I completely forgot they were even a thing. They look like some straight-out Mario Kart. Um, I kind of hesitate to say that we haven't seen those before, because last part... Oh, and I was talking about the clucker booms. So I was like, oh yeah, those haven't been a single thing since this level. And that was long. Going back and editing. Um, a little fun fact about how I edit these videos. I record the footage. I record the entire game in a couple of sittings. Then I edit all the footage into parts. These little chunks that you see. Like these 10 to 15 minute parts. Then that's why I go and record my voice over a period of time. Typically I'll do a couple. And I kind of upload them. Then do another batch and upload them. But after I record my voice for each video... If there's anything I think of I want to add in, like any like text or effects I lagged in. Like, for example, last part, I added in some text where I was like, um, I said something about like, um, what was it? Um, the Desert Ruin stage, Sonic Lost World. I was trying to remember the name of it, and I couldn't remember, and I kind of added in some text saying, this is what I'm talking about. Stuff like that, I always add that after the fact. That's what I do last. I don't know, this is kind of fun insight. I've thought about doing a video talking about you know, showing how I do a full video, like fully recording, editing, everything a video. Now I do a multiplayer video is different, but um, for now I'm gonna stop talking about this because that's not really, <laughs> so really do some heavy sidetracking, side, ugh, sidetracking from the actual game. So this is one of the wasting levels. Um, again, what we were talking about earlier with Mario Galaxy kind of reusing concepts. This is kind of a good example of Mario Galaxy reusing another level concept. Now I love this level. This is actually one of my favorite levels. But it's very similar to the other beach level we've had. Seaside Galaxy, I believe is what it's called. Now we have this one, which is also fun. I love this one. It has a lot of unique stuff as well. And actually, I know a lot of people don't like this one, but I like um, the Purple Coin Mission, this star. Oh, in this, um, the purple coin comment in this galaxy. Except towards the end, it gets a little eh. It's just fine as the last one or two, but for the most part, I like it. But this wasting level, basically, you just follow in. I forgot this shark's name, but you gotta make sure you get, um, you gotta go through all the hoops. And the fastest way to get through here is by spinning or, of course, grabbing a shell like I am right now. Of course, I just lost a shell, but it's all good. For the most part, I think, I don't know if it's required to have a shell or not to get through here. But it's highly recommended. I because I do know these checkpoint thingies eventually do disappear. But that's it. And yeah, that will do it for today's episode actually. So thank you all so very much for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next episode. <laughs> Bye!